They called it the cradle of Indian civilization. But for centuries, the truth lay buried, hidden beneath layers of earth, myth, and time. In the dust-blown plains of the Indus Valley, massive cities rose and vanished, without a trace of their people's voices. Who were they? Where did they come from? And why did one of the world's earliest urban cultures simply disappear? Streets aligned with mathematical precision. Drainage systems more advanced than those in many modern towns. Jewelry crafted with microscopic detail. A society so sophisticated, yet nameless in its own script. Its language never deciphered. Its kings unknown. Its stories silenced. For decades, archaeologists pieced together broken pots, ancient bricks, and mysterious seals etched with strange animal symbols. But without human remains, the mystery stayed locked in stone. Until now. Beneath a dry riverbed in Rakagari, the bones of an ancient woman emerged, her burial untouched, her DNA preserved. What secrets did her blood still carry after 4,600 years? And could this single strand of genetic code finally tell us? Who really built the first great civilization of India? Long before the rise of Greece, before Rome ruled the world, even before the pyramids of Egypt reached for the skies, a civilization flourished along the banks of the Indus and the now-vanished Sarasvati River. It spanned over one million square kilometers from what is now eastern Pakistan to northwestern India. More than 1,500 settlements have been uncovered. Carefully planned cities like Harappa, Mohenjo-Daro, Dolavira, and Rakigarhi. At its peak, nearly five million people lived under its rule. And yet, for all its monumental scale, the Indus Valley Civilization remains one of the least understood societies in ancient history. Unlike Egypt or Mesopotamia, the Indus people left behind no grand temples, no pharaohs, no dynastic records carved in stone. Instead, they lived in cities laid out with engineering precision, with homes connected to grid systems and public baths. Their seals, adorned with animals and symbolic scripts, hint at a complex belief system and trade networks stretching as far as Mesopotamia. But their language remains undeciphered, their social hierarchy a mystery, their rulers, if they had any, forever nameless. British colonists first stumbled upon the ruins in the 19th century, mistaking them for medieval remnants. It wasn't until the 1920s that excavations began to reveal a civilization far older and far more advanced than anyone had imagined. Yet despite over a century of digging, one question has haunted every trench, every artifact, every buried wall. Where did these people come from? Were they indigenous to the land or migrants from distant lands to the west or north? And now, with the advent of ancient DNA analysis, that question is closer than ever to an answer. The year was 2016. In the quiet fields surrounding the village of Rakigari, located in the Indian state of Haryana, a team of archaeologists uncovered something extraordinary, an undisturbed burial site, deep within the layers of a once thriving Harappan city. Unlike previous discoveries, this one was different. The skeleton of a woman, delicately positioned in a narrow grave, had remained untouched for nearly five millennia. Her bones were intact. Her ornaments still clung to her wrists. And more importantly, her DNA had been miraculously preserved in the arid soil. This was unprecedented. In the hot, humid climate of the Indian subcontinent, Organic material rarely survives. For years, attempts to extract genetic information from Harappan remains had failed. The brutal climate had erased every trace of ancient identity. But now, in Rakigarhi, fate had offered a key to unlock a mystery older than the Vedas. For the first time in history, 
scientists held in their hands a human genome from the very heart of the Indus Valley civilization. She was not royalty. She bore no signs of violence or disease. Her burial was simple, humble. Yet her body would speak volumes. Every nucleotide, every sequence in her double helix, held whispers from a forgotten past. If her DNA could be decoded, we might finally uncover whether the Indus Valley people were the ancestors of today's South Asians or a lost branch of humanity that vanished without a trace. A single woman, a single grave, and the first true chance to hear the genetic voice of a civilization that had been silent for 4,600 years. The investigation that followed was anything but simple. Extracting ancient DNA from a 4,600-year-old skeleton in India was like trying to hear a whisper through a hurricane. The heat, the moisture, the centuries of microbial decay all worked against the scientists. The team, a collaboration between Indian archaeologists and international geneticists, knew that even a slight contamination could erase the truth forever. With painstaking precision, they isolated a tiny fragment of the woman's petrous bone, the dense inner part of the skull, known to sometimes preserve genetic material when all else fails. The sample was rushed to a state-of-the-art laboratory equipped with ultra-clean rooms, where even human breath could jeopardize results. There, under the glare of sterile lights and the hum of sequencers, the ancient code began to emerge, fragmented, fragile, but real. The process took months. Data had to be cross-checked, revalidated, sequenced again. Every anomaly investigated, every strand compared against modern and ancient genomes from around the world. The team faced setbacks. Some fragments were unusable. Others bore signs of contamination. But slowly, the puzzle started to come together. And what they found didn't just challenge long-held theories, it shattered them. Until now, many scholars believed that the builders of the Indus Valley civilization were Indo-Aryan migrants from Central Asia, arriving after 1500 BCE. This was the foundation of entire historical narratives. But if the woman from Rakigari predated these supposed migrations by over a thousand years, who was she? And what did her DNA reveal about the true roots of Indian civilization? The scientific world held its breath. When the results finally came in, they were unlike anything the researchers had expected. The woman from Rakigari carried a genetic signature that was neither Indo-Aryan nor from the Central Asian steppe. Instead, her DNA revealed a deep connection to a lineage known as the Ancient Ancestral South Indians, an indigenous population rooted in the subcontinent for tens of thousands of years. Even more striking, she showed no detectable traces of steppe ancestry. The very genetic component associated with later Indo-European migrations. This meant one thing. The core population of the Indus Valley civilization was native. They had not arrived from elsewhere. They were not invaders, nor imported architects of culture. They were the original people of the land, descendants of hunter-gatherers who had settled the Indian subcontinent long before cities rose and languages evolved. But that wasn't all. Her genome also carried traces of ancient Iranian farmer ancestry, suggesting that before the Indus Valley civilization fully formed, there had been contact, perhaps even intermingling, with westward populations moving east through the Zagros Mountains. Yet these were not conquests. This was not a violent takeover. The evidence pointed instead to a slow, organic blending over millennia, a synthesis of ideas, genes, and technologies. The implications were enormous. Not only did the Rakigari woman provide the first genetic evidence of the Indus people's identity, she also revealed that India's earliest urban civilization was built not by foreign settlers, but by indigenous communities who had evolved over thousands of years. 
long before the Vedic age began. The historical narrative had been turned on its head. Now, with ancient DNA as a guide, the puzzle pieces begin to fit. Thousands of years ago, in the fertile floodplains of the Indus and the elusive Sarasvati River, early farming communities began to thrive. They cultivated wheat, barley, and lentils, domesticated animals, and learned to manipulate water with remarkable precision. Over generations, villages grew into towns, towns into cities, and by 2600 BCE, a vast urban network had emerged, interconnected, organized, and unlike anything the ancient world had seen. In Harappa, workers molded kiln-fired bricks identical in size to those in Mohenjo-daro, over 600 kilometers away. In Dolavira, engineers built multi-level water reservoirs. In Lothal, ships likely docked at a carefully constructed port. These were not random settlements. They were manifestations of a complex, centralized intelligence. Yet this intelligence left no royal tombs, no monuments of conquest, no statues of gods. Instead, their power seemed to rest in planning, trade, and order. The people of the Indus Valley lived in a quality rare for ancient times. Homes were often similar in size. Waste management was communal. Even their seals, while artistic, lacked the glorification of individual rulers. Their system worked. For nearly 700 years, it endured. But then, it faded. Climate models now suggest a prolonged drought struck the region around 1900 BCE. Rivers dried. Crops failed. Trade routes collapsed. Cities were gradually abandoned. There is no evidence of war, no mass graves, no apocalyptic end. Just silence. The people may have moved eastward, blending into new communities, taking with them their skills, beliefs, and genetic legacy. And though the cities crumbled, their blood flows on, in the DNA of millions of South Asians today. The ancient woman from Rakigari may have died over 4,600 years ago, but her story has just begun. In her silent bones, we found the echoes of a civilization long misunderstood, a society of engineers, farmers, and traders who built one of humanity's first great urban networks, not through conquest, but through cooperation. Not by foreign hands, but by the native children of the Indian subcontinent. Her DNA challenges everything we thought we knew. It rewrites the origins not just of India, but of civilization itself. It reminds us that history isn't written only in stone or scripture, but also in our cells, in the microscopic code passed from mother to child, generation after generation. Today, the story of the Indus Valley civilization is no longer just an archaeological mystery. It's a living narrative, carried in the genomes of people walking the streets of Delhi, Lahore, Mumbai, and beyond. A story of resilience, of adaptation, of identity. And perhaps the greatest mystery isn't what we've uncovered. But what still lies buried beneath the dust? How many more voices are waiting to be heard? How many more forgotten ancestors lie beneath the soil? holding secrets that could reshape the way we see the world. If this journey through time and science fascinated you, don't forget to like, subscribe, and explore more stories where history, biology, and mystery collide. Because the past is not dead. It's coded in us all. Stay curious. Stay questioning. And remember, sometimes the deepest truths are written in our blood.